tonight from State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It's a special Christmas night edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Sun. Few places in the country as picturesque as the desert southwest. And we've got a good one on tap here at State Farm Stadium in Glendale. Tonight we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Arizona Cardinals. The former Lion Matt Prater has it teed up ready to go and we are underway now from Glendale. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. Tampa Bay's offense set to take the field, and of course, a quarterback, 23-year veteran, who's had a Hall of Fame career several times over, the great Tom Brady. Well, we've all seen what Tom Brady can do on a football field for a couple of decades now, but how about his most impressive accomplishment, moving to a different franchise and taking them to a Super Bowl title as well. Not many players can continually stiff our father time the way that he has. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady rolling to his right. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. And let's face it, that what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. And if you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed, the agility, so good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And what's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact, and he'll go deep. Brady's got his guy. This is Gage. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. On second down, here's Fournette. And he'll go down at the 28. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Brady now on first down. Flush to his right. This is caught by Evans. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Here's Brady to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Oh, they were so close. That close to their first points of the game. Just needed to hang on just a second longer, but he couldn't complete the process of the catch through the jostling from the defender. 
They'll bring a receiver in motion left. On second and goal, Brady. Eluding the pressure right toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. It hasn't been a real good start to this game from a defensive perspective, but now after the incompletion on second down, things may be changing. If they can come up with one more play, they might be able to get out of it with just a field goal attempt. Brady now on third and goal. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Russell Gage from eight yards out. And the Bucs put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. That was a big throw right there on third and goal. And the defense has to be prepared for you to throw the ball on third and goal. Because really, second down, second and goal, that's your play action time. And you're not sure whether they're going to run it or throw it. Third down, you're usually sure they're probably going to pass it even more impressive that they got it done and on the opening drive of the game. The Bucks ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a guy who's moved around a bit in his career already. Out of the University of Texas, it's Colt McCoy. This is a guy who has studied and learned the game since birth. The son of a coach, grew up in the game, understands how to motivate and how to maneuver the football downfield when given an opportunity under center. Now McCoy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Here's McCoy. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Coming in to put a lick on him was Levante David. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Looking to throw. McCoy escaping the pressure right. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Give him a little extra credit there. His head was cool as the play broke down. Didn't force a throw, and in the end, got to show off his athleticism with a nice gain to bring up a new set of downs. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 36. Off the play fake, McCoy. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. One well, of the league's best linebackers, he ended that play almost before it began, and the running back absolutely overmatched no matter what he tried to do. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Back to throw. McCoy. And he's going to go down again. Devin White defeating the offensive line and getting to the quarterback. All about the offense so far this drive, putting something sustained together. But the defense, they responded on that play. Second and manageable became third and long. The drive marching to the end zone is one play from stalling out. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He'll get this to Connor underneath. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Andy On fourth Lee. down, here's Andy Leon to kick it away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They have to be thrilled with that first drive. They got him the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. A man who played collegiately in nearby Tempe, the old Sun Devil, it's Rashad White. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. On play action, now Brady. I throw, but the catch is made. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. It's another first down as they bite off 23 more on that one. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And Fournette with a first down carry as he works his way forward for a nice pickup of about six. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? From the 31, Brady flushed out right. play and it'll bring up third. Man, I think he's just grateful to get back to the line of scrimmage and avoid not just losing yardage, but a big hit on that play as well. That defense closed on him quick and forced a quick surrender out of bounds. Buying time, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sand.
Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Greg Dorch back deep. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That's a double win there, partner. You keep out of the return man's hands, and you pin him inside the five-yard line. Pretty darn good. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Operating from the gun, McCoy. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get on track in this one. Here's the veteran punter Lee as he sends this one away. Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Back now comes Tampa Bay. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Throwing on first down is Brady. Flush to his right. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this one is incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try and throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. Steps away to his left. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Chris Godwin in the final seconds of the first half. And the Buccaneers would extend their lead here just before halftime. And just before the half ends, the prayer is answered defensively a disaster there. I know often we're surprised when this actually works. I mean, the excitement level goes way up, but maybe we shouldn't be because I know as a defender, you've got to play the ball in this situation, but you can't interfere with the receiver because, remember, it's a spot foul, and it'd be first and goal if it happens in the end zone, and you don't want to give up that play. And that little bit of hesitancy often works really well for offensive guys. Extra point up and good by Suckup, and it's now 14 to nothing. Just a four-play drive that time. And it's Chris Godwin who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Four seconds, all that remain here in this first half as the kick gets away. This taken in at the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. With the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. 
As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It'll be the Cardinals who get the ball first. They trail here as we resume action in the third quarter. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. The Cardinals ready to go here to start the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. And they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Dancing to his left. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Oh, partner just a second earlier and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped and a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42 yard line well, the offense knew it they were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted to throw on second down. McCoy looking left sideline incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything, and against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This is taken around the 12. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Throw right side, take it in by Godwin. So it was already a gain on the completion, but tack on some more with that penalty. Absolutely, and no matter what angle you're making the tackle from, you can't grab the face mask, and that's just putting your defense on its heels just a little bit more. Play action, now it's Brady. He's gonna take a shot right away for the end zone. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. Up the gut, Fournette. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. Five yards, now it's third and five. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. 
He's going to let this go for the end zone. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call. But for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette punching it in from a yard away. And the Bucs take a three-touchdown lead. Extra point put through by Suckham, and it's now 21 to nothing. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the man who finished it off with a run into the end zone, Leonard Fournette. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. The Cardinals offense ready to set up shop. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. The stop made defensively by Mike Edwards. Another modest gain there on that one, and I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. 12 yards to pick up. Good enough for an Arizona first. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all. Challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. On first and 10 is Connor. To the 43, second down. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And just nowhere to go for Connor. Defense gets to him and they mark him short. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet, at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now Brady. And Brady, the tight end's got it. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Brady to his tight end, Brady, for the Tampa Bay first. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, 
But they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. On play action, it's Brady. Oh, he's thinking end zone for Evans. And that'll be incomplete as it's knocked away. But a penalty flag is down. So who's this going to be on? So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fair catch called for and collected right at the 10-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Cards are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Well, the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think... Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked off by Logan Ryan. And the Bucs are going to take possession of the football. Another solid game-changing play for this defense for the interception. At this point, though, I don't know that it's game-changing. I mean, they've got this one in firm control. And you always hear about... You know, those stories about someone left their game plan behind and maybe you benefit from it. I'm not going to say that that happened, but they certainly have appeared on defense to be a step ahead this entire game. Guys are always in the right spot in order to make a play. The offense has had its moments, too. And this Fournette territory here, and he's alone in the backfield on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette with his second touchdown of the night. And the Bucs up the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And it is 28-0. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. Ready to go with their next drive and at the line, the Cardinal offense. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. On second and ten, McCoy eluding the pressure right. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still, some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. On third and two, McCoy on the slam complete to Hopkins. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. Throwing on first down, McCoy. He's got McBride here over the middle. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get your reset. 
They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. On first and ten, McCoy over the middle here to Brown. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Escaping the pressure, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Looking to throw. McCoy. Throwing left side. It's complete. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. I don't know how many times, not just in my playing career, but you and I working together, have we ever heard a coach say, you know, I just don't have that play on my call sheet. And that's really what we had here. That was a big hole they were trying to get out of. That big gain still a ways to go, though. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. So out come the Bucs now. And checking the timeouts, they do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. They'll try and run some clock with Fournette, and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Again, it's Fournette. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 46 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. And Brandon, this is where it pays to have a big back who can take over a football game, especially in the fourth quarter when you've got the lead. Your ability to not just wear people down, but close games out. Inside handoff now to Fournette. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. So they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. So long, everybody.